guys, I wanted to drop in because this week we've had a number of questions come through on Ladder Up. And I think that's because, you know, term three has officially started. Um, well, not started, but it's, it's rolling along now. And a lot of people have got their questions that they want help with. And so I wanted to share with you another essay marking video today. And with this one, the student has basically just asked for really brief feedback. They weren't looking for too many details, so I won't be going into as much detail as I did for my previous videos, which I'll link up above for you, wherever. And so I'm just gonna give some main comments and kind of leave it there. So as you guys probably know, with Ladder Up, you can ask your questions, such as if you've got like a specific question about a concept that you don't understand in your text, or if you wanted essay marking you could get that done as well that's what i'm going to do today so let's just get into it so as always the student knows that there's this recording and they've agreed to it i want to say thank you to jessica so we keep their names anonymous because i guess people would like to be anonymous and i completely respect that and yeah thanks so much jessica for allowing us to look through your essay as a team and as a group together here at Lisa Study Guides and I know that your essay is going to help a lot of other people out as well so thank you. So Jessica is doing the white tiger and if you're not doing the white tiger then don't stress. I think that essay marking and looking at what I'm picking up in this essay will definitely help you regardless of what text you're studying because a lot of this stuff isn't necessarily to do with a specific text, but it's to do with, you know, how are they writing this essay? Is the essay actually answering the prompt? Which in the past video, it wasn't so much. So it'll be interesting to see what the issues or the main priorities the students should focus on in this essay are. And yeah, let's just get into it. We've got display the cycle of poverty and oppression faced by the people in the darkness. Cool. So set it amidst Indian society stricken by corruption and in inequity. Diga's novel The White Tiger portrays the stark dichotomy of society, the darkness, and the light. Okay, so fine. Um not too sure what's going on here with the underline. I'm sure it's just a simple error, but I'm just going to undo that so that it's clear. The Darkness and the Light, this novel is about Baram who is born and raised in the darkness but manages manages to defy all odds and break free to become part of the upper class, the light. Okay, so similar to the previous essay prompt, I kind of don't really feel like this is really necessary. So I'm going to say that with this one, It'd be good for you to actually kind of explain to us what the darkness and the light is. So I know that your teacher and, you know, the people who have studied this text will know what you mean when you say darkness and the light, but you've just said stark dichotomy of society, which a dichotomy of society could be anything. It could be, is it because of two very different groups of people so it's kind of like what is the idea of the darkness and light like what does the darkness and light actually represent so there needs to be some sort of mention about how the darkness is this like repeat of people's life in poverty whereas to step into light is to escape this poverty and to begin a new life for oneself this is the type of the idea that we would be looking for this novel is about Baron who is born and raised in the darkness but manages to defy all odds and break free to become part of the upper class, the light. Okay, this is good but I would say that if I'm being a bit harsher, um, this sounds more like an explanation. Um, your introduction should uh, revolve around your contention. So, oops, here I go again with my edits my typos he manages to defy all the odds and break free okay so with this part here like this is kind of what i was talking about Barum is raised in the darkness manages to defy def, 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 defy all odds and break free to become a part of the upper class the light so that's what i meant just before about actually explaining what the darkness and the light is and so you're doing that here so in a sense maybe you could actually 
combine them and make it a bit more concise. What I mean by that is this student has taken a couple of sentences to say what they need to say when they probably could have just said it in the first sentence and be done with it. All right, I'm gonna keep reading. Throughout the novel, there is a constant rhythm of poverty and oppression faced by the people in the darkness. This can be seen as the people of the darkness are caught up in poverty and cannot manage to escape it. This is due to the people of the light exerting power over those people and inequity and poverty in order to head towards a positive future for all. Oh, I think this must have been <laughs> the student writing something else. Okay, so this actually gets better. Like, I actually really like how Jessica goes into talking about Adiga and what Adiga is trying to do with this book. You know, all F authors have some sort of message that they want to get across and I think it's great that she's touched upon that. So good work, Jessica. I'm gonna keep moving forward. So. The people of the darkness cannot seem to escape or break the cycle of poverty no matter what they try and do. Even their physical environment traps them in this cycle as the Ganga River, also known as the Black River, symbolizes a future of no hope or change. The darkness holds their funeral around the black mud of the Ganga where everything dies. Okay, so overall with this first paragraph, it's pretty good. Though what I would say is there's definitely room for improvement. So for example, where is the evidence for this part of the example? So we don't really see any quotes or if it's not gonna be quotes, then give me metaphors, imagery, give me symbols that really show what you're trying to say here um, and back up your point because I think that's really lacking there. So I'd say use quotes. As always, like it's not about the number of quotes for me, it's more just about make sure that you actually keep supporting your point with the right evidence. Okay, I'm gonna keep moving into the second paragraph now. So if I read this part here, so we've got as we did the other few considerable measures just to write them off. So for me, this part is kind of just retelling the plot. Instead, try to tell me through literary devices and quotes. So I think the main takeaway for this student is maybe how they're actually conveying their examples and using evidence to back that up. And I think it is present in some places, but in other places, you know, like it's there, there's a bit of quoting there, but in other places, like it, it's really just kind of talking about what's happening rather than showing us. If I keep moving on and I look at this part here, I would say to Jessica that you discuss too many examples here, but only just touch on them. Whoops, too many examples. So again, it's that idea of breadth and depth. So it's better to focus on one idea and go in depth because this is where unique discussion will come through. Um, okay, so I think there's a few different examples here. Um, there's just a lot of information that's been packed in and we kind of want to avoid that. Uh, like last time when I was doing the previous essay, that particular student actually didn't have enough examples. They only focused on one. Whereas what I'm seeing here in this essay is this student is using like three or four different examples and just kind of putting them one after the other. But we kind of don't want that as well because it stops you from being able to dig deep into that one example and find lots of evidence to back it up. So it's the balance of breadth, which is how much you cover and depth, which is how deep you go. And finding that balance does take some time, but the way that I found the balance was to focus on two main examples per body paragraph to back up my contention. And then within those ones, I'd use quotes and try to find other literary devices that would support my point. Okay, so that's 
all for this particular essay marking session. Um, how did you guys find this? Is it helpful? I would absolutely love to hear from you. If this essay is something that you want to get your hands on and you kind of want to actually read it in detail and have a look at how I like, you know, reread my feedback, then I'm going to link you to the ladder up page that's got this um, particular essay up in the cards and down in the description below. If you guys are interested in getting any of your essays marked, or if you've got any other questions for English, then just jump on board to ladder up and I will see you there. I think as we're moving through term three and really heading towards the phase of exam period, you know, there's going to be a lot more questions on your mind and I want to make sure that we're here to support you. So that's it. See you soon. Bye.